Uh, many GIMP users may be familiar with GMIC already, but for those who aren't, I'll just go through the slides as he's written them. Uh, I'm James Pritchard from London. David is from France. We actually met only because of his software. I was looking for a tool to convert some images and to learn a bit of maths behind image processing and came across it completely by accident. Um, we have a very active user community around GMIC and I'll come on to that in detail later, but it, I think it's a nice symbol of that that David has opened up to users to come and present his piece of, of software, which we all like. Okay. So David, as I said, is in, from France. He works uh, for the Grec lab at the University of Caen. CNRS is the uh, national French uh, research establishment, and it's part of a network of uh, university and other academic institutions, particularly focused on solving difficult problems in image processing uh, that arise in, in many different fields. So what he's saying is that his piece of software is used for serious science uh, in, in solving real world problems. Image denoising was the, one, the use that I came across it. That's very common in photography, uh, particularly when you've got mobile phones involved. But other forms of enhancement, uh, image recognition, segmentation, alignment, registration, detecting features is, is a common use in that world. As well as being an academic institution, um, I think like most countries, they try and get the academic research of the country back into industry and try and focus uh, that on generation. This actually helps build multidisciplinary teams. You've got some of the best minds uh, coming from these individual companies who are very focused on their own particular applications, either in physics or chemistry, medical science. And using this tool gives our user base uh, access to some of their ideas. So obviously being French, government supported, they're, they're largely um, French institutions. One other one I would point out is INRIA, which itself is a software um, producer of a, a lot of open source software, including OCaml, the uh, programming language. Uh, but that's just something else I've come across from personal interest. So anyway, the image data that we're dealing with is from a very wide range of different problem sets. And in particular, not just 2D, not just 8-bit. We're talking about 3D moving images. Um, for example, not just ultrasound as, as shown here, but something like uh, medical imaging now involves diffusion tensors. So things like blood flow through the brain is actually picked up by a detector. And you end up with a very high dimensional image um, that changes in 3D through time. Uh, it's not just color color processing photography that it's used for. So in, in this work, he and his team of uh, PhD students uh, form part of multidisciplinary teams. And what they do is use this tool in different ways to analyze and explore their data. Um, and this is why they've built this tool. So the tool is open sourced, funded by the public and uh, is involved in real-world problems. And the tool they've built um, is able to solve all this kind of uh, scientific question. And that was his primary focus. Um, so looking at, at the kind of flexible tool he needed, um, he didn't find it in existence already. He started in 1999 uh, building the C++ library uh, that underlies gimmick. This is the C image library. Uh, it's also available open source under the Cecil license. If you're a C++ programmer, go ahead, use it. It's actually a single file header, heavily templated, very uh, neat and easy to use, but only for programmers. Um, so what he wanted to do was take that base and build something a bit more like image magic or graphics magic. So this is a summary, really, of, of what CImage gives you. 
It's, it's got all of the processes that he's needed to do on graphics. It's got its own data type that goes into the template. It's up to 3D. Um, time is done by a series of frames. So you can have a stack of 3D voxels. Um, it provides a lot of the image processing algorithms, particularly segmentation and denoising. Uh, but it's also got standard morpholo morphological operators too. And being written in pure code, it's very extensible and very flexible to do that. So if you wanted to write a new uh, particular routine that was very customized in that library, that is possible and it's very open. Um, the French open source license, Cecil C, I think is deemed to be free software or Libra software and is GPL compatible. Um, so you can use it for commercial projects and do whatever you like with it, basically. So that got them to where they needed to be for the scientists that could program. But remember, I said they're working in multidisciplinary teams. They're working with people who don't care about C++ coding styles, memory management, all of the other problems that that raises. So they needed different interfaces that designed specifically for the different kinds of people. I myself am a mathematician, so I quite like the, looking at the detail, but I don't necessarily think about it in an artistic way or a, the way a physicist might think about it in terms of some PDE equation or the way a programmer might think about it. So we all have our own perspectives. And what he wanted to do was build the, the minimal core set that would enable different kinds of people to all use the same library. So these are the formal goals. I mentioned the um, medical imaging aspect of it already. Um, that kind of thing is probably done at the C++ level because it's very data intensive. But for quick viewing and prototyping, if somebody wants to take something he's already built, they can then work with um, those building blocks as if they're modules within GMIC as a script. So it basically provides that scripting interface to enable it to interoperate with other things in a very standard way. And writing it as a whole new script language um, basically allows uh, a lot more flexibility but to be exposed to the user base. So at the moment, there are 750 commands uh, that pop up if you load GMIC as a GIMP plugin. Many of them are not unique uh, single commands. Many of them are actually pipelines of, of several commands wrapped up in a single sort of script uh, to give you a, a visual effect or a, uh, an artistic filter. But many of them are specific uh, geometry, morphological operators, um, pattern generators, etc., that people have written themselves. I think the core number of, of real operations is still in the hundreds. So there's about 150 things that uh, you would have to write to be able to even start performing the same kind of operations. Even if you could chain multiple operations together, they can't be broken apart. Um, so from Lena being sort of edge detected. There's about three or four different ways to do edge detection already built in, and you can pick those up and build your own very quickly in script. Uh, the idea of flood filling a region by ISO surface is very straightforward in the 3D viewer, and it provides the UI within GMIC itself to then rotate it and, and do things with it interactively and take slices through it, etc. Um, and then things like the histogram, graphing, plotting, any, any mathematical formula you like. Uh, warping images with mathematical formulae is, is made pretty straightforward too. Um, and I'd say being quite mature and having an active user base means, I mean, David has himself written this 300-page uh, documentation, but I found one of the quick ways to learn things is to ask questions on the forum or to talk to other users live or email, and it's a very friendly group of people. Um, I'll come on to exactly what the script looks like later on, but I think going back to what he wanted to do, he had this uh, a need for a quick tool to prototype things. 
was looking for a replacement uh, for image magic, really, to, um, to do the things on much higher dimensional images. And so that's why he targeted the command line, because he's sitting at the terminal, gets a data file, wants to just put a pipeline together and have a look. What, it, what does it look like? Oh, it's not quite right, let's do it again. So that's very, very much his starting point. And that's the main um, source file that, that is updated first. So the GMIC interpreter is one I'm really here to <clears throat> try and persuade some other projects to pick up and use. At the moment, um, the external integration has been done pretty well by David in GIMP itself in the old plugin format. Uh, so what we need to do now is be compliant with the new Gaggle interface and uh, get all of that working as quick as we can. Um, David seems to have had some discussions already, but it's not actually provided us with any code yet. Um, Critter, I believe there was a, an initial plugin built which was just a wrapper around the entire crypt as a single extension. Uh, so there was no user interface to allow custom code, preview, or of all the things that a user would actually want. So I'm not sure how much work it is. We actually started with the C-Image plugin way back in the 1.6 days. That didn't survive the port to Qt4. Uh, it was also quite limited because I didn't understand how to get uh, high bit depth image data into CMG. But last weekend, Lucas Twerdy, uh, helped by David, has started on a new GMAC plugin for Krita. So work should be ongoing. Breaking news, super, thank you. Um, yeah, and also a lot of the user base for high bit depth and other things that uh, GMAC does naturally is people who are doing HDR photograph. photo. Okay, HDR photography and um, other things. So the plan is, if we can seed the idea or if we can help you as a user, there are many people already trying to work around GIMP to convert a file using some plugin into a, you know, from a raw image, uh, demosaic the raw image, uh, fix the tone mapping and color mapping, etc., using GMIC, and then you know move it around between different things. So getting that workflow for photo retouching you know, really clean and, and fitting the user interface would probably make, you know, GIMP more usable, but could also be picked up by other applications like Darktable and, and things that photographers use. So what does it look like? Um, this is a snap of his screen. As you see, this is the command line interface a scientist or uh, somebody like me might use uh, when we're actually looking at stuff. So you send it on the first line a list of, of commands, you know, command line entrant, gmic, first argument, a bitmap file name, you blur it, mirror it, it shows user interface that is simply a single shot of the end result stack. At this stage, that will be a single image. Um, so when, it, when the command line finishes, it shows you what the image properties are. So these are examples of the output image. In, in practice, they occur in a box. It, it works pretty much the same cross-platform. Um, the same code is exactly the code that you would supply in a script if you wanted to put it into GIMP uh, via the plugin. Uh, the only reason for the extra inverted commas is because of the, um, the command line. Uh, the shell takes some of those inverted commas away. Um, so here's just a few examples. I've mentioned that before. This is a picture of the actual GIMP uh, current plugin uh, filter. So at the moment, it lists every filter in, in a category. Uh, there's no tagging. There's no um, easy way to find a, func you know, a functional definition. But people who use it frequently get to know what they, what they like. They can uh, put presets or shortcuts right at the top. And they can write their own files with customized code in. I actually find this very useful for prototyping my own code. Uh, the custom code on the right-hand side of your screen it enables you to actually write the script and test it, and then change it and test it again in preview. 
So that's a, a very quick, interactive way of, of designing a script. And it allows you to uh, then codify that, put in parameters, and, and use just regular sliders quite easily. So this is a multi-platform. The, the plugin works um, not only in GIMP, but they've made an online uh, version as well to help demo it without install. They have a, a link to OpenCV to link it to live video from a camera. And the, the general structure is to keep the script commands as the main bit of, of the, uh, the program. So the green box uh, represents scripts, both uh, ones that simply are single commands, ones that are pipelines, ones that are designed for uh, medical, you know, uh, technical purposes, and other ones that are artistic filters. They're all saved in script files, and multiple script files are, are used. And you can write your own and keep them locally. Uh, you can also update those online. Uh, you don't need to reinstall the software. So it's a very quick turnaround to release uh, to every user of this software a new script. You can do it in five minutes. Just tell them it's there. They press a button. It refreshes. The GMIC interpreter code is a single file. And well, it's two files. It's the header and the, and the main file. The C image file is a single header. It's less than a K of, of, of actual bytes. Um, and you don't need uh, the ZARP, the online service, or the plugin for that to work. Um, I really hope other people will have a look at that code and, and see how easy it is to plug in to their own project. Um, the user base I mentioned at the very beginning, one minute, uh, is, has grown a lot, mainly thanks to GIMP and the GIMP plugin making it very transparent. Um, this is basically the, the surge in, in users or in download rate since uh, the GIMP plugin was first released. Uh, binaries are built for OSX and uh, they're built quite quickly by the user base and, and distributed as binaries so that people can easily install it. Um, and there's, there's many different forums that are quite active as I mentioned. That's how I found out about it. Um, please drop in there, give us a bell, ask us a question. Um, yeah, and they're continuing to work on new algorithms. Uh, this particular problem is of one of in-painting. Say you wanted the parrot uh, without the cage, you mask out the elements you don't want to see, and then you in-paint. This, this is using an algorithm that basically extends objects or, or line features through space that you've erased from the image. There is now a new textured version of that uh, that was released only a week or two ago. Works extremely well, very similar to Resynthesize. The difference is you can get it cross-platform. You don't need to rewrite it. Uh, Colorizing black and white images, uh, em emulating other people's effects. Uh, in this case, a user saw an effect they liked in Photoshop. <laughs> was this yours? No. And uh, yeah, so they basically said, can you do the same thing with the free software? And yeah, you just knock it up, get somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, this was knocked up in 10 lines. So, you know, you see something you like, somebody will have a go at emulating it. Ask on the forum if you're an artist or whatever. Um, David's very responsive and he, he also knows the kind of people that are interested in similar problems. And then finally, a bunch of sketch type images. Um, extracting line information, orientation information, using that to then create brush strokes. Uh, you can, you know, it's the same kind of concept as uh, image analysis. It's just using it in a more artistic, inventive way. So thanks very much for listening. I uh, hope it's excited some of you to join us. Thank you, Richard. Um, questions? Yes. Collection of GMAC filter scripts online. If, if, say, there is a Krita GMAC plugin, can they push their scripts to the same online repository? Or is there some kind of curation? So the curation is limited to designating users 
uh, that are listed in a file. So at the moment, David maintains for the GIMP plugin a list of links that are, are looked at. Um, and it's, it's done basically on a one-to-one -one trust basis. Um, there would be no reason why you couldn't curate your own file and have that particular plugin only look at that file. Uh, it's open source. It's, you can see how it's done it in, in the version of GIMP. Gmail can do exactly the same thing, but have a, a fancier filter. I think from a user perspective, the instant update is good. Uh, what's difficult is actually finding the filter that does what you want at a point in time if you don't know, you know, if you haven't seen it already. Uh, so we're, we're working on making that a little bit easier, but we don't have a database of filters. It's a very boring job to go through 700 filters and categorize every single one. So. Maybe take a look at, at the Gettled user specification that uh, Krita and, and Katie uses. It's, it's an open desktop thing that handles sharing uh, things among users, and then users can rate stuff like that for themselves. It's not ideal, but it's a good start. Thank you. Um, I think one problem is probably security if it's totally open, uh, because this is effectively general software. So, <laughs> yes, you need, to, you need to trust the people you're downloading from. If there's no other questions, then thank you again. Thank you, Richard.